What's up everybody? So it seems like it is a month of updates. As even the OnePlus 8T and 8 series after the OnePlus 9R have got the Oxynos 12 update. Though it is still in beta and most of you have been waiting for it since the past few months as it is kind of a big deal because of the promises made by OnePlus. And even though we still have it in this open beta stage, there are certain things to keep in mind. But before we start, make sure to tap on that subscribe button if you haven't already. It will keep you up to date with all the latest videos from the channel. And in case you wish to watch this video in Hindi language, here is a card to the BitTech Hindi channel as well. First, well do not hurry and install this update because it is an open beta update and not a stable one. So it is bound to have some minor bugs and various issues. So in case you are on the stable version, just stay on it for some days if you want the best possible experience. Second thing, you can easily go from stable to open beta without losing data. Yes, you heard it right. You won't lose any data but still take a backup before you flash this version. Rest everything will stay as is but backup for your safety only. And if you wish to come back to stable from open beta, you will end up losing your data. And I'll share a separate video on that as well. Now let's move on to the process on how you can install this one on your device. Well, the process is really simple and you're already used to it. So basically like you install every update, just download the zip file from the link in description area. And when you will download it, it will be in the downloads folder of course. After that, you will have to cut it out from the download folder and paste it outside, not into any folder as such. Just make sure to do this step properly, else the system will not be able to detect that zip file. Okay, so after keeping it in the internal storage, now go to settings, here go to system, choose system updates from the list and click on this gear icon on the top right corner. Now choose local upgrade option from the list and choose the zip file we just downloaded and click on this ok button and you can even see it on the pop-up that it will not format your data. So read this pop-up every time you install an update. And this will start installing this OxynOS 12 open beta 1 update on your OnePlus 8T. And I'll also post a full review after using it extensively. So stay tuned for that as well. Now this will take some time to install. So leave your device as is for some time. And I'm fast forwarding the process just to save some of your time. Okay, so after it's done, you will see this reboot option on your screen. And that means the update has been successfully installed. And to complete the process, all you have to do is reboot your device. And there you go, the Oxynos 12 Open Beta 1 on your OnePlus 8T. And it does feel same yet different. And I wouldn't repeat the same line that it is color OS only. Well, we all know it. So let's focus on what it brings to the table for us. Now let's have a look at the benchmark scores after this update first. And let's see if there is any improvement at least on paper. So I did this test on Oxynos 12 with Geekbench and Antutu. And on the Geekbench, the device scored as high as 911 in single core and 3157 in the multi-core score. On the other hand, on Antutu, the device scores around 6,79,000 points, which is quite good as well. First up, right from the lock screen itself, the fingerprint scanner animation has changed now. And well, you know where it is from. But for what it's worth, it works really fine as it should. And similarly in the launcher, the icon pack from OxyOS is gone now, which is something I definitely loved and will miss it. As this phone icon looks kinda cheap, or is it just me? Let me know in the comment section down below. The launcher also looks a bit different now, love it or hate it, and this is what it is now. Of course it is not the OnePlus launcher as you must have guessed it by now. By default we get some of the applications and thank god and OnePlus for almost no bloatware, except that Facebook Messenger. Well, we can easily uninstall that, no worries. And apart from that, the theme store is there, which I'll get to in a second. So more or less, the system is still clean. Also, the hidden space has now been moved from the usual left hand side in the launcher, which was very convenient. So it has now been moved under privacy settings. And there you can set up a different or same pin and you can hide any app or use the app locker. And there is also a private space to hide your private stuff like the images, audio and all other files, which is handy for some. So all the features are present here. There is also this app cloner that works in the same way as it did on Oxynos 11 and you cannot use it on all applications, just the ones supported, which isn't that handy definitely. And before I forget, the DRAM level is Wideband L1, so Netflix and other applications will work in full HD on this one. And all other payment apps will work as well as it passes the safety net. 
Also, there are some widgets from Android 12, which weirdly can be added once you long press on the home screen and tap on this plus button on the top left corner. And also, there is no Material U theming or any sort of custom theming engine, which might come later as Google said the same. So for now, it is not there, but the haptics do feel better and a bit more refined here. The app closing animation and everything feels fluid for now, and I don't see any issues here. Though you might get annoyed to see the shelf every time you swipe down from the top right corner, but you can turn it off easily. So on the shelf screen, click on this gear icon on the top right corner and turn off the shelf from top right corner option. Also yes, the shelf is kinda new now and it looks like this with its new UI and it has some refinements here and there. Also the applications like OnePlus Dialer and Messages from Oxenos 11 will just not work on this one. So don't even try. And yes, you still have the Google dialer only. So if call recording is your priority, stick to Oxygen OS 11 until I can find a solution to this one. Lastly, in the launcher, the wallpaper picker has also been changed now and it looks something like this. It also brings some new animations which you can try as well. Overall, it feels smooth just like Oxygen OS, but it doesn't carry that same feel. One irritating thing that I saw here was the privacy request pop-up that is there in almost every single place. And they are basically asking to collect more data now, as well as the permission that the app needs. So it just doesn't look nice and it is necessary to agree to it, which is very wrong in my honest opinion. Now going into the settings and here the UI has changed as well, which is fine and it looks good enough I would say. One more thing that got changed here is the customization tab and that is now called personalizations. And here we have a bunch of options like before. So you do get the always on display with all the older themes that were there, including the Insight AOD, Bitmoji and the Canvas AOD. And it's good to see all of them present. The Canvas AOD has also been upgraded now and it even has more options to choose from. In the icons tab, you can tweak some icons and shapes and you can even apply custom icon packs, yes. But you can still tweak the accent color, thankfully. And I love the fingerprint animations especially the fireworks one and some extra animations have also been added. Overall, the fingerprint scanner is fast and responsive, so no issues there. Now about the theme store that has been added, well, I really would not like to apply any theme just to make it look even more far from stock. And it looks kind of funny to me sometimes, but some of you might like the theme store as it does have some free themes as well. And I do feel this was given just to earn more money by selling content like Xiaomi and other brands too. Next up, we have this dark mode toggle, which has finally brought the pitch black dark mode with it. And I'm quite happy about it, of course. So thank you for that, Oppo. Next, we have this new OnePlus gallery, which is now called Photos. And this is also in tune with Oxygen OS 12. So it looks more or less kind of same. Coming to the camera application now. So after this update, the version of camera application has been bumped up from 5.8.120 to 5.9.43 but it is still the oneplus camera application and not the oppo camera app so the ui is similar and all the modes are similar as well so here are some camera samples from after the update and i'll test it out even more and post an in-depth review but for now here is what they look like so as you can see well not much has changed and the images do look similar mostly and I see some more grain in the front facing camera samples. And that is a bit disappointing. Similar is the case for videos as well. So let's see how it will do in various scenarios. Now, apart from all that, we have the 100 mode just like on the Pixel devices. And the other features like Scout, Quick Launch, Zen mode, and Work Life Balance mode are also there as well. The screen recorder has also changed now. And as expected, it looks the same like that on ColorOS. There is also an option to bring all the icons down while using the device with one hand. So I think that's nifty as well. About the overall performance, well, the device does seem snappier as compared to Oxygen OS, but at the cost of some features, UI among other sacrifices. And I'll also test out the battery life after this update. And yes, the battery tab has also been changed now. Plus you have that high performance mode. So the device won't stay in maximum performance like before and you will have to turn on this mode to get the best results while gaming. Speaking about the gaming mode, well, it is also from Oxygen OS only, but it does have some new features, like there is a voice changer, and you can also add shortcut to open any application, 
which is indeed helpful. Also I did play BGMI on it for a short time and yes there is 90 fps mode support which sadly doesn't work as per the fps counter at least. And overall it will work best for longer period on smooth and extreme settings. And also you cannot force 120hz mode like before. But I did find a solution and here is a video on how you can do that. Rest I'll test out the performance even more so stay tuned for the full review. Overall it does feel more refined than Oxygen OS 11 but the UI might not be that appealing to everyone now. Other than that there aren't any major issues and features like dynamic theming or material UI are not there. So everything else is fine more or less as this is just color OS without some features. And it is what it is now, love it or hate it. The Dolby Atmos is also a bit better looking now and similar to what we get with ColorOS 12. And in case you wish to watch that video, here is a card for all the features in ColorOS 12. Rest, if I missed out on any tiny stuff, well I'll be covering it out really soon. So do like this video if it helps you out and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.